like to uh, first open up the floor to Rojan Lyons. She's Assistant Professor of Entrepreneurship and Innovation at Dublin U City University. And now, during this time, she is now co-founded Team OSB Extended, an open innovation community focused on COVID-19 solutions and outreach. Over to you, Rojan. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks a million for having me. I uh, just want to share a couple of slides so that I am not forgetting anybody when I uh, tell you our story. So, um, I am a lecturer and a researcher in entrepreneurship and innovation. Uh, I work in a college in Dublin. And I have studied innovation my whole life, and I suppose in the last three months have really got to see it in motion in, in a really real sense. Uh, it all started when a couple of my friends put out a tweet asking for people to help with some open source solutions for the coronavirus. This was about three weeks before lockdown in Ireland. They were uh, unindated with responses. Um, it, you know, thousands and thousands of doctors, engineers, frontline staff, all jumped onto a, an online community, a Slack community, to try and solve some of the problems that were pressing in Ireland and internationally. Uh, and it grew and it grew, and uh, it became a, a two-pronged approach. One Slack channel devoted to the, the hardware ventilator solution, of which multiple iterations happened, and they the group gained huge success in a number of different channels. You can see in that slide there just how many versions of the ventilator were created by groups all over the world. Interestingly, uh, once lockdown happened across the globe, these open source designs were taken by different groups who were trying to work in private labs, work in their own resource centers to try and test that around. And so as that was growing, we were realizing that there was even more people joining our community that weren't necessarily specifically engineers or hardware experts, just people trying to do something. And we recognized that there was plenty of other problems that needed solving. So rather than confuse the one Slack community, we started a second and we called it OSVX. And this was for non-ventilator uh, aspects. So it related to software problems, you know, service issues, even outreach and volunteering campaigns. Anyone that felt like they needed to do something and found their way to us, we tried to find them a home. And you know, doing a poll of some of the 1,500 members that we have in this community now, it's incredible to see the range of people that we have in that community. Um, interestingly, uh, three axe throwers uh, among that group, one with a Guinness World Record. Uh, we have bikers, web designers, students, uh, really, you know, word of mouth traveled in this community. The types of projects we work on uh, are proposed by frontline staff. And uh, Jill Barry, one of our other founders, who is frontline clinical expert, she helps to create good project proposals around these. So we've worked on some really interesting projects, the face shields and face masks and PPE resourcing that uh, a number of our speakers today will be talking about. But also, um, you know, more interestingly, things about biohazard stuff, uh, decontaminating floor trays so that wheel rotations don't contaminate trays and as trolleys are moving around corridors. Lots and lots of very interesting uh, aspects. And now we're starting to move into the more service-based approaches like what schools need to do uh, and how the, this crisis is evolving, the new problems and the new aspects that are coming up. Uh, that frontline staff workers and other general people are finding are knock-on effects of this crisis. So with this community and, and definitely my perspective as being the kind of community manager and one of the founders of this channel, it was very tricky in the sense that we had um, a huge range of people, many of whom had never used Slack before, or a community like this, never, many of them had never done open source collaboration before. We had a range of projects moving from hardware to software and to outreach. And so even just 
organizing and documenting and trying to move people in the right channels was a real um, challenge, uh, particularly because none of the founding team or the organizing team had ever used Slack before either. So we were all new to, to the initiative and we had to really think on our feet. Um, at the same time, restrictions were getting stronger and, and real need was starting to be felt right across the world, but particularly and acutely in Ireland, um, where a number of our members were, were from. So just to show you, and, and, and I am sticking to the five slides, don't worry, Christina, um, just to show you a bit of the range that we had, just to give you that perspective, we had a group of designer and artists working on um, on guidance posters that were not as scary for maybe our retirement centers. They were translating those into multiple languages so they could be used right across the world. A designers, artists, loads of people in that, in that channel. Added to that, some translators joined that group and started to translate them out. So there was kind of multiple groups working there. Um, Abby in Calcutta started Paper Shield, a group that was looking at how to replicate some of the frontline equipment in paper form so that it was cheaper and it was uh, less risk to recycle or to dispose of. So there was a group working on just paper-based um, you know, solutions for what's currently out there. Uh, on another channel, we had our bikers. So uh, seeing the need for PPE distribution, um, looking for a solution that was out there. One of our group was involved in a biker gang and he got all of those involved. And currently we have a dispatch and delivery network of one, over 1,100 bikers uh, who go around Ireland delivering PPE from companies uh, or manufacturers that need them. So that's been, for Ireland, that's a huge, in, in terms of our size, that's a really large national network and these are voluntary. Every single person on our Slack community, including the committee, uh, are voluntary. No one has fundraised for our initiative uh, at all in the, in the couple of months that we are, are active. So that's to give you a span of what has been going on. But the question that we were talking about uh, was how do we manage it? So very early on, what we did was we divided up and gave every project to project managers. Uh, Safety in numbers, we don't devote any role to one person. Every role has two people. Uh, we divide, developed a project development pathway running through what we would feel would be the best way of using our project and helping to support it. This was handy for our project managers so that they could really see what their vision was supposed to be and what their aim was. As an open source community, we considered that the phase one output or one of our main aims would be to present a really good insightful piece of information about a problem you know one possible solution and how that would frame out and if we could publish that as a you know an insightful piece of information that would be great someone might take that in another country and roll with it ideal um, but if you know it's the information that we were trying to to get out there Phase two was if the product or the solution was needed, a group might spin off and focus on manufacturing and getting that out there. And we have had a number of successes in terms of um, goggles, face shields, and so on in that phase two. We had quality management, we had discussions, we have weekly project manager meetings, and we have connected with as many open source communities as we have, have tried. And that's why most of the people watching this today um, and the speakers will know me from like DMing them on their Slack channel saying, can we join in, can we work together? Um, I think openness and collaboration is key for all of this. And then I am a researcher. So when I don't know the answer to a question, I look at research and there is a growing level of research on how to manage open source communities and you know, how to be realistic about them. And you know, many of the COVID-19 communities are now you know, experiencing uh, kind of that, re, you know, that, that um, I would say limiting of engagement because they've had to move back to their own jobs. There's kind of a cyclical process of engagement with voluntary members and they have to be always brought back into the circle with a new challenge or a new wave of energy. And so it's interesting to see 
how our community has moved through that and we are experiencing challenges about momentum at times or if a project has hit a wall in terms of not getting the information from health service etc uh, it, it can be a challenge to keep that momentum going so there was a couple of, of different bits that we tried to enact based on what we had learned from research um, you know and some of it's very kind of obvious about trying to hold local webinars or give people that personal touch or that voice um, but I think it's 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 great to be able to follow this and part of my next six months is actually I uh, received funding to do some research on the open source community in times of crisis and whether or not this whole COVID-19 crisis has affected our trajectory as an open source community or you know has it affected momentum and I think that you know we have had a lot of challenges but we've had so many successes and I think the real learning for us has been you know how we have pulled together how people are so committed and loyal to the channel is you know insane the people that we have been in contact with it seems like it's been years when it's only been a couple of months and none of us have ever met face to face so i think we need we do need to learn from that and you know make sure that we can foster that again and we wouldn't need such an external trigger like a, a pandemic for that we need to to figure out the secret so that's me i'm delighted to hear all of the rest that's going on and thanks again for for inviting me onto the panel fantastic contributions 